In this video, we'll find out how to use the equations of equilibrium to determine the support reactions in a simply supported beam, fixed end, which is also called a cantilever beam, and an overhanging beam. Without further ado, let's get to the first question. In this case, we have an externally applied moment at the midpen of the simply supported beam, and at point A, we have a hinge support. A hinge support is a support which resists forces in the vertical as well as in the horizontal direction. So let's represent the vertical force by RAY and the horizontal force by RAX and assume that the RAY is acting in the upward direction and RAX is acting to the right. It really doesn't matter what direction you choose, in the end you'll get the same answer no matter what. And at point B we have a roller support. A roller support is a support which resists forces only in the vertical direction. And that's represented by RBY, and let's also assume that this force is also acting in the upper direction. However, if you look a bit closer, we can see that this 5 kN meter moment is producing a clockwise rotational effect on the beam about this point. And RAX would be producing no moment at all as it's passing through the point about which the moment is to be determined. So, one of these two forces has to change its direction in order for this beam to remain in equilibrium. The combination of these two forces has to produce an anti-clockwise moment which will balance the clockwise external moment for this beam to remain in equilibrium. But at the moment we will be assuming that these two forces are acting in the upper direction. And let's apply the first equation of equilibrium that all the forces in the, in the horizontal direction are equal to zero. As we have no external horizontal forces so Rax would be equal to zero. Applying the second equation of equilibrium and summing up all the forces in the vertical direction as zero, and let's, and let's assume and let's take the sign convention that upward forces are positive. And we assumed in the above diagram that RAY and RBY both are acting in the upper direction and there are no other external forces acting in the, in the vertical direction. So RAY plus RBY equals to zero. And let's say Let's call it equation 1. Let's apply a third equation of equilibrium and summing up all the moments about point A, about this point, to be 0. And let's say that anticlockwise moments are positive. Now we must know that the forces which pass through the point about which the moment is to be determined produce no moment at all. So RAY and RAX would be producing no moment. And then we have a 5 kN meter moment, external moment, and the direction of this external moment is clockwise, so we'll take minus 5. So we have a minus 5 here. And now we have our by. The definition of moment is force into distance, force times distance. So our by, if you want to determine the moment produced by our by, about about point A, then we multiply RBY into this distance, and it's producing a clockwise anticlockwise moment. And anticlockwise is positive in our convention, so 10 RBY plus 10 RBY. And after solving this equation, we get the value RBY equals to 0 0.5 kilonewtons, and putting the value of RBY into equation 1, we get the value of RAY minus 0 0.5 kilonewtons. Now, the minus sign indicates that the value and the direction we assumed of RAY that was upward was wrong, it should have been downward. Now, you can just let it be like this, minus 0 0.5 kilonewtons, or you could just write RAY equals to 0 0.5 kilonewtons and just show a downward direction arrow. Let's get to the second question. In this beam, two external loads are applied at a distance of 5 meters and 10 meters respectively from the fixed support and both their magnitude are 100 newtons. A fixed support is a support which resists forces in the vertical and the horizontal and also resists moments. The vertical force, RAY, is acting in the upper direction as both these forces, both these external forces, are acting in the downward direction. RAX would be equal to zero as there are no external loads, external forces acting in the horizontal direction. 
and both these forces are producing a clockwise moment about this point. So the direction of MA should be anticlockwise, of course. Now summing up all the forces in the y direction equal to zero and taking upward forces as positive, we have RAY acting in the, in the upward direction and 100 Newton. Both these forces are acting in the downward direction, so we take their signs as negative. After solving this equation, we get RAY equals to 200 Newtons. Now summing up all the moments about point A equal to, to be equal to zero and taking anticlockwise moments as positive. First we have MA, which is an anticlockwise moment. And the moment is defined as force times distance. And we have this force, which is acting at a distance of 5, five meters from point A and is producing a clockwise moment. So, 100 times 5 and minus, minus 500, as it's producing a clockwise moment. And this one, 100 times 10, and producing a clockwise moment of our point O, so it should be minus 1000. And after solving this equation, we get the value of moment, which is 1500 newton meter. And now summing up all the forces in the x direction, as we have no forces acting in the horizontal direction, so, Rax would be equals to zero. Now let's move on to the third question. In this case of an overhanging beam, we have two external loads, 10 newtons and 100 newtons, acting at a distance of 5 meters and 12 meters respectively from point A. In point A we have a hinge support, and at point C we have a roller support. So, there are two forces one force in the vertical and one force, one reaction in the horizontal direction. And at point C, we have only a vertical vertical reaction. Let's assume that both these vertical reactions are acting in the upward direction. And to RAX, as there are no external horizontal forces acting on the beam, so RAX would be equal to zero. So let's sum up all the forces in the horizontal direction first. RAX equals to zero. Now summing up all the forces in the vertical direction and assuming that the upward forces are positive, we have RAY and RCY both acting in the upward direction. So RAY plus RCY and we have a 10 newton force acting in the downward direction and a 100 newton force acting also acting in the downward direction. So minus 10 and minus 100. After rearranging this equation we get this, let's say that this equation is equation 1. Now, summing up all the moments of our point A to be equal to 0 and taking anticlockwise moments as positive, RAY and RAX would be producing no moment as they're passing through point A, and this 10 newton force, which is acting at a distance of 5 meters, would be producing a clockwise moment, 10 by 5 and minus sign shows that it's a clockwise moment. And RCY is producing an anti-clockwise moment about point A at a distance of 10 meters, RCY by 10. RCY by 10 and, a, and, and an anti-clockwise moment. And lastly we have this 100 newtons force acting at a distance of 12 meters, 100 by 12, and it's producing a clockwise moment about point A. And after solving this equation, we get RCY, the value of RCY, which is equal to 125 newtons. And putting this value of RCY into equation 1, we get the value of RAY, which is coming out to be minus 15 newtons. The minus sign here shows that the, the direction we assumed was wrong. It should have been in the opposite way. So you can write RAY equal to 15 newtons acting in the downward direction.